Hi guys, I just thought I'd jump back on. Um, I ended up having no viewers, so I was actually quite one wondering if it was the internet. Um, internet here in Australia is notoriously bad. So, um, can you pop up, say hi, give me a wave, give me a high five, shout me a heart if you can see and you can hear me. I will grab a drink of coffee. Thank you. Um, at least now I know that you can hear me. So what I was saying, um, and this is particularly pertinent for women in business. Oh, my goodness, my screen just went blue. Uh, <laughs> can you still see me okay? Um, so what I'm talking to you about is the art of saying no to customers. Um, and this is particularly pertinent for relevant to women in business and especially handmade businesses because um, we suck. Women suck at saying no. We're carers, we're givers, we're all of those kinds of things. So I wanted to give you guys some tips. So I'll jump over all of the preamble that I had beforehand and uh, cut to the chase. So there are two ways that you can say no to customers um, and actually help both yourself and the customer. The first way is say no, but. So often what you'll find is that customers will ask for discounts or they'll ask for free shipping or they'll, you know, essentially they want to cut the margins and good on them for actually trying to, to save themselves some money. It's, you know, we're all, not that we're all cash strapped, but, you know, I'm happy to try and save some money where I can. But it cuts into your bottom line and generally what it cuts is the amount of money that you pay yourself for your time. So what you can say is, no, but. No, um, I can't offer you a 10% discount on this, but I can and add stuff to it. Um, no, but I can add, you know, a matching such and such. No, but I can discount the the shipping to, you know, X, Y, Z. If you feel like you want to and you can afford to, this is the thing. Um, you know, it's your business. Don't let somebody else dictate to you how you should run your business. So the second thing is, and this was something, sorry. Me my second cup of coffee. I've dropped the kids off at school, so I need another coffee. Um, so the second thing that you can do, and this is something that was taught to me by a male manager that I had when I was working in the Australian Public Service, is it's a simple premise of don't complain, don't explain. So what it is, is when you when someone asks for something and you don't want to do it, you don't want to give it to them, um, and you've got really good reasons why, just say no. No, sorry, I can't. Now, the thing that I've found dealing with clients in the past is that the ones that, yeah, and that is the that is exactly why um, I don't like giving discounts is um, in my handmade business, I price myself um, at the top end um, and I do that because it's 100% handmade. It's not an import um, that they say, well, somebody's handmade it. Um, it, it does, it undercuts your competition and it gives you a bad name in the industry and people expect it from you. And this is the thing, people will, your clients, yeah, exactly. If we all stop undercutting each other, we will empower each other and as women we need to do that more rather than cut each other down. Exactly, thank you. Sorry, I, I I don't know what your name is. All I can see is your ID and I'd really like to refer to you by name. Hang on a sec, I'll see if I can see. Karen? Is it Karen? So, um, <laughs> yeah, those with money will, good. Those with money will have to cough up. Exactly, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. I've got... I would rather sell four things to five people than and, and make, you know, 50 bucks, for example. Um, how my chickens? <laughs> uh, I can't see them, actually. Um, 
than sell, you know, to 50 people. I would rather price myself so that I can afford to keep doing what I do than to try and undercut the, the woman next to me. Um, but the other thing that I was saying was don't complain, don't explain. So I saw a thing in a group where a woman was saying, oh, but, you know, I've been asked for a discount. What do I do? You know, this is the email. And it was full of excuses. It was full of reasons why she couldn't um, offer the discount. Um, you know, I'd be making it a loss. Um, I need it, you know, I, this is my sole source of income. I use it to pay for the kids' ballet fees, all of these kinds of things. Like, your customer doesn't care. They don't care why you can't do it. Just tell them. They'll either accept it or they won't. And the fact of the matter is, is if they're not going to accept it, you're actually better off without them. Um, you're better off without the client who's going to constantly argue with you over what kind of discount you're going to offer them on your product. Um, they're only trying it on. They're only trying... Um, to see how far they can push you. And the fact of the matter is, is if you stand clear within your boundaries, you're not going to get pushed and they'll know not to do it again. And the other thing is, is that when you keep toing and froing with those clients um, over discounts and things like that, one, you set up a behaviour for how they can treat you and two, you're wasting your time. That time that you're dealing with emails and toing and froing with them about um, how much you can or can't offer them and the reasons why you can and can't offer um, the discounts that they're after, is time better off spent in marketing or um, dealing with clients who are going to pay you those top dollars? Um, yeah, absolutely, Karen. I find that those clients are, are the... Are my red flags, if they are asking for discounts, I would rather pass them off to somebody else who is prepared to deal with that um, and prepared to waste their time with those clients than, than waste my time. Go for it. See you later. Quite happy to palm you off to somebody else. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, that was the things that I wanted to say was that, about um, saying no to customers because as women in particular, we find it incredibly difficult to say no to customers um, because we we do we want the money and we want to please people and we want the sale but the fact of them yeah authenticity really does um, create healthy boundaries you're right Karen it, it's true um, I found that authenticity it's not the boundaries don't just work for my clients as well they're good for me too because it reaffirms to me what my, my morals, my ethics and um, my central code is and I can then work from a stronger place for them. So that's why I like them. Um, so, yeah, so the first thing was if, you know, if you are approached by someone and you don't want to do something, you can say, no, but, no, I'm not going to do that, but I will do this. Quite happy for you to do that. That's uh, one thing that you can do. So it's no, but is one thing that you can say. And the second thing is don't complain and don't explain. If you are not prepared to do what they're asking um, of you, don't. But don't tell them the reasons why. It's your business. You don't have to explain why you can't offer the discount or why you can't do this free shipping or why you can't do whatever it is they're asking for. And send them on the merry way because the fact of the matter is, is <laughs> don't say, exactly. Exactly. Don't sound like a whiner. Please don't sound like a whiner. Um, and, and that's what I find is that as women, when we're offering explanations um, to why we can't do something, it's, um, <laughs> that's all right, Sarah. Um, you can catch the replay anyway. Um, when you're offering explanations as to why you can't, why? exactly, people don't care why you can't offer X, Y, Z. They're only in it for them. You're in business for you, so don't explain to them why you can't do it. It's really that simple, and it's very empowering when you do it. Um, an example that I had um, in the service industry, so it doesn't just work for handmade businesses as well. I had a client, um, coaching client, who wanted to keep picking my brain. So I went back to her and I said, it sounds like you're trying to change our agreement. Here's my contract please sign my contract here, here, here and here and we can proceed. 
I haven't heard from her. She was going to waste my time and cost me money. So I've sent her on a merry way. And you know what? What it's done is it's opened up more space for me to take on different clients, clients who are quite happy to have my services and quite happy to, <laughs> thank you, um, quite happy for them to, yeah, it is. And I don't normally use my contract. I mean, my lawyer is actually going to be pretty cross with me saying that, but I don't often use my contract. Um, but it's a good way to say, to weed out those people who are going to waste your time and who are going to suck your energy and who are going to make life difficult for you in the long run. So yeah, that's it. How to say no to customers um, and you will feel better for it in the long run. Um, like Karen said, it's very empowering setting those boundaries and sticking to them. So, all right, I must go. Speaking of boundaries, I've got time frames. I've got a workshop tomorrow that I'm running online. So I might actually... Yes, that is exactly it, Nigel. It's qualifying that puts energy... We are learning as women, Karen. Um, qualifying your reasons why makes you feel better, um, but it doesn't doesn't add anything to to the conversation. Um, but um, yeah, generally sticking by boundaries and saying no, yes, does does qualify why um, qualify your energy and sets it in the right spot. You're you're correct. So yeah. So, qualifying the customers are the buyers, etc. Yeah, they are. They are, but um, you're the business owner, so realistically you're the one that, that sets the tone as to how you're going to be treated by, by the customers. And I think that's where you're going. I hope that's where you're going, Nigel. All right, so to set boundaries, I must go. I must go and set up for this workshop that I'm running tomorrow on goal setting and reviews. So I shall head off and I hope to <laughs> give lots of cheese for you. I shall, Karen. I shall. I, I need to trim their, <laughs> thank you. I need to trim their flight feathers and I don't want to because she keeps, one of them keeps jumping up onto the deck and I don't want her on the deck. I don't want all the mess. So anyway, I shall see you all later. Bye.